In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Last time we spoke about the essence of the Mass. Today I want to speak a little bit about how the whole church is involved in every Mass. So, the doctrine of the mythical body, we've all heard that word before, the mythical body of Christ, is not very well understood. And even if it were understood well, it's still an inestimable, inestimable mystery. How can we explain this doctrine simply? Well, the best way to explain it is for, uh, from St. Paul's adventure before his con conversion. He was walking to Damascus to arrest and persecute Christians. Remember then he, uh, Christ appears to him and says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And then St. Paul says, who are you? And he says, I am Christ, who are you persecuting? This is a big thing. This is, in these few words, are contained the doctrine of the mystical body of Christ. Because, remember, what does Christ say to him? Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? But Saul was persecuting whom? Christians. Individual Christians in a city. So Christ is saying this, that there's some sort of union between him and his faithful. So, it's so close of a union, they are me. If you're persecuting them, you're persecuting me. So this is simply the doctrine of the mystical body of Christ. The fact that Christ's faithful are united to him in an extremely close, mysterious, just incomprehensible mythical bond. Now, time to move to the Mass. At every Mass, the whole Church, the Body of Christ, participates in the sacrifice of the Head, Christ. That's important to know. So remember, Christ is the Head, the Church is His Body. At every single Mass, the whole Church, who is Christ's Body, participates in His sacrifice, the sacrifice of her Head, Christ. Even the souls in heaven are united to the sacrifice. Even the souls in purgatory are united to the sacrifice because they're part of the whole church. So then during mass, the whole church unites herself to Christ. She unites herself to him in his offering um, to the Father. She is inseparably united to Christ. We often say that the church was born where? Where was the church born? On the cross. That's where she was born. Just as Eve came from Adam's side, so does the church. She came from the pierced side of Christ on the cross. So there's this great unity between Christ and his members his faithful, who are called the Church. Now, even more in Mass, Christ not only, not only offers Himself up to the Father, He doesn't only say, you know, I, Father, I offer myself to you, but He offers in Himself His members, because He holds them all close to His heart, even the weak ones and the ailing ones. And this is what Pope Pius XII tells us in his encyclical on the mystical body of Christ. That Christ offers himself, in himself, his members during Mass. Um, one time, someone wrote a letter to St. Peter Damien. St. Peter Damien was a monk and a cardinal in the 11th century. And the person asked this, he said, um, Father Damien, or Bishop Damien, whoever he was at that time, how is it that we can, if I'm praying my divine office by myself, how can I still say Dominus Vobiscum? 
because we don't have this in English, but in, La in Latin, vobiscum means you in the plural. In English, we, we only have one word, you, for both singular and plural. But in Latin, vobiscum means may the Lord be with you, that is, many of you. So someone asked him the question, how is it that I can truthfully say when I'm praying by myself my divine office, Dominus Vobiscum, and respond, Ecum Spiritu Tuo, because I'm alone. And St. Peter Damien wrote this really beautiful and long response to him, saying how it's completely truthful to say Domin uh, Dominus Vobiscum, even if you're alone, because the whole church is present during the divine office. The whole church is present during the Mass. So, when a priest says Mass by himself, and no one is present in the church besides him, he still turns around and says, Dominus Vobiscum, even though no one's there, because, mystically speaking, the whole church is present. So, just to get a little more concrete now, um, let us remember two things. First of all, the prayers of the Mass have a special emph emphasis on this fact that the whole church is praying here and not just you or not just I. So, for example, the intentions are bigger than ones that we ask for ourselves. We might go to church one Sunday and say, you know, God, I pray that you help me find a new job. That's our personal attention. But read the collect for that day. And it'll say something else besides your intention. It'll say in a really uh, official way, Lord, grant us an increase of faith, hope, and charity on your life. I didn't even, I'm not even asking for that right now. Well, it's not your intention, but it's a whole church's intention. So those are things to notice in the Mass, that um, the, the plural of the prayers. Many of the prayers are in the plural. For example, during the canon of the Mass. Um, so many, uh, for example, the prayer communicantes. Having communion with and venerating, first of all, the memory of the glorious and ever Virgin Mary. So first it says, we have communion with her and all the saints. Uh, and another example, right after the consecration, the priest says, Wherefore, Lord, we thy servants and also thy holy people, mindful of the same Christ thy Son and his passion and death and resurrection and ascension. So there's this plural of the prayers. Again, before the uh, our Father, the Pater Noster, but the priest says, we make bold to say, we make bold to say, Pater Noster. So it's important to keep that in mind, recognizing the plural of the prayers in the Mass, because it involves the whole church. Again, in the canon of the Mass, the church mentions explicitly the Pope and the Bishop, because that's part of the communion. She mentions also, also the souls in purgatory because they're united too. So we, we really we can we can really say that the whole church, in all of her hierarchy, in all of her souls in heaven and purgatory, are mentioned in the canon of the mass. Now the second lesson to learn from this is that unity and charity between Catholic faithful is so important because if we're united at mass. And especially during Holy Communion, we're united in Christ, we better be kind to each other outside of Mass and better exercise great fraternal charity towards each other. So that's it for today. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.